confounded. I am truly vexed at the master of Grassdale Hall. Aloha and welcome back to my channel. I'm Marilyn Maya, the baby boomer booktuber, and this is Victober. But it's also a month that I didn't read too much, but what I read were big books. So first I want to talk about books that aren't Victorian that I read, and one of these is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. And The Poet X is written in verse. I listened to the audiobook on this and um, I enjoyed it very much. I don't usually read YA anymore, but um, in this case, this was uh, bandied around booktube for such a long time, and it really brought me back to my roots, which is um, New York City, and um, not only that, but Latino people, because I'm Puerto Rican, and um, I really enjoyed this because it's written in verse, and I didn't know it was written in verse. Um, I just thought it was lyrical, and it's about Zamara, who's the poet X, and how she um, goes through coming of age in New York City with a very strict uh, Christian mother, and uh, my grandmother was very religious as well, so I, it really brought back a lot of memories of my childhood. Um, and she wants to write slam poetry, and she does it at the end. And, well, she does it all through, because it's written in verse. But it's, for me, it was a little young, the, the chapters were small, short, and I think I'm a little beyond reading YA. But in this case, I will give this four stars because I wasn't bored um, and the author reads her own book, which was um, very realistic and she's a great writer. So if you do read YA, I recommend this book and I think you should read it in audiobook because it, it, was, it kept my attention. Okay, now... A book that I DNF'd, but, but don't <laughs> get mad at me because um, I will get back to it. So I call it a DNF for now, and it's The Picture of Dorian Gray. And it's written by Oscar Wilde, of course. And the reason that I DNF'd it is not only because of the fact that I have cataracts in my eyes and I'm going to have an operation soon. So I have to be very careful about what I read and not to overdo it. But um, when I started reading the first few pages, it was men, uh, a couple of men being very witty and I wasn't in the mood for it. So as a mood reader, I wasn't in the mood to go into what I know is a very good story. But I am going to pick it up again. But I'm going to bring it back to the library. Okay, now for what I did read. Um, in my other videos, I, re I talked about Agnes Gray, which is about a governess and uh, is really the autobiography of the author, Anne Bronte. I hadn't read any Anne Bronte before uh, Victober. I didn't even know she existed. So this was a treat for me to read uh, the, f the only two books that she actually read, but she, read, she wrote a lot of poetry. But I really enjoyed Agnes Gray, and some people say, said on, on BookTube that either you like, Anne, you like Agnes Gray or The Tenet of Wildfield Hall, her second book. Uh, but I like both of them for different reasons. And I think I disliked some of both of them for the same reasons too. Anne Bronte was a very interesting person in that um, she was a very religious person and uh, all of her books I think are morality tales and I'll get into that more deeply when I talk about the tenant of Wildfield Hall. 
but in Agnes Gray, she's actually telling her own story because she was a governess and her brother was a tutor in these families that she um, worked at. And it's really interesting to see what she went through and how she processed it. Of course, I don't think she married, but, um, well, I won't tell you the end of any of these books, but um, I, don't, I think she was single until she died at a very young age. But she had a lot of ideas, and, uh, and it's very interesting to read about it. Now we're getting to the second book that I read of hers, which is The Tenet of Wildfield Hall. And like I said, like I brought up, it's a morality tale, which is very Victorian. And what I mean by that is that she wasn't really trying to only tell a story, but she was trying to teach her morality or religion to others by writing this book. I started this video with my take on a part of the book. The Tenet of Wildfield Hall is very complicated. It's, it's a big tome and it starts with a woman who it comes to a, a town and lives in and moves into a mansion that's in disrepair. She has someone fix up a few rooms and the rest of the, um, the setting of this is very interesting and in how it shows how, um, how a big mansion can really go into ruins if it's not taken care of. And all of the town wants to know about this woman whose uh, name is Mrs. Graham. And they, they really are excited. I guess their lives aren't too exciting. So they, they try to uh, meet her. And during these meets, they find she's not very friendly. And there's one particular fellow named Gilbert who's very interested in, in Mrs. Graham. And so it goes. This book is written in two perspectives. It's written first in Gilbert's perspective, in his voice, and then suddenly it goes into Mrs. Graham's voice, or the tenant of Wildfield Hall. And she has quite a story to tell. This is written in letters. And usually I don't like that, but the way that Anne Bronte did it, it was very easy to read and um, that wasn't my problem with the book. This book goes into alcoholism, which wasn't really known about in Victorian age. They actually thought that alcoholism was a defect of personality or of the person's soul. So it goes very deeply into how you can change by just trying to change, which is, we know now that alcoholism is a disease, but they weren't that enlightened at the time. But yet, this book has many progressive ideas about that a woman has dignity and can leave uh, an abusive person or husband when she's had enough or when she thinks that it's too detrimental. And I don't think that was a very uh, popular thought in Victorian age. What I have against this book is that at times, Anne Bronte wants to teach us her religion. And she goes very deeply into hell and um, practically gives us sermons. And I think this book could have been shortened a little bit. And some of the sermons were interesting, and I'm not against religion, but I don't want to be lectured. And a lot of the book, maybe a little bit too much of the book, is um, a lecture or a sermon. And uh, I think that was just part of her personality because Anne Bronte was a very religious woman. 
Uh, and so even the romances uh, in the books, in the book, were talking about how some people are just bad and some people are good and there's really no in between and you just have to believe in God and then your life will be changed which you know some people still believe but I think it's more complicated than that and people are more um, they're, they're more complicated than that so um, even though I really get, gave these book this book four and a half stars and I really enjoyed it um, I think that and Bronte wanted us to really understand how the moral mores of the Victorian age were apropos to all times, which of course they're not. And the upper classes, or even the middle classes at that time, um, were had standards to to keep. And if they didn't keep those standards, then they were ostracized. And I think that's what a lot of the book is. Um, yet, like I said, it's very progressive in some ways. And I wish that she had lived longer so we could hear more about um, the Victorian age and her life. I don't know, I said in the beginning that when I read a book I start to talk like the time of the book that I, that I read. And this has happened when I read um, Tana French who writes um, in an Irish uh, brogue or, or how you call it. And uh, I start mim mimicking uh, the words that, or the, or the uh, sentences that I hear or the phrases that I like. And I started uh, doing that and saying verily, I don't think they said verily though, but I started talking like a Victorian person, which is uh, very interesting, confound it. But um, anyway, uh, I want to end with uh, a poem or a song. I don't know if Anne Bronte uh, wrote it herself or it was just a folk song. I noticed that in the book women are put down a lot and they're not giving cr given credit for being intelligent beings and uh, I think Anne Bronte was trying to change that in her writing uh, by having a woman's perspective so women were like brought out to sing and show their um, their talents. And this, the main character, we'll call her Mrs. Graham for now because I don't want to give away any of the plot. But she was a painter and uh, she sold her paintings through uh, a third party. And I think that's how women, when they wanted to be creative, how they did it. But. Um, so I don't know if she wrote this. She was also a poet, Anne Bronte. So I'll end with one of her, one of the women who had a beautiful voice. It wasn't the main character, but she was brought out to sing this song. And I'll just read the last part. Farewell to thee, but not farewell, to all my fondest thoughts of thee within my heart. They still shall dwell and they shall cheer and comfort me. Well, being on YouTube cheers and comforts me. So I hope that you will subscribe to my channel and smash that notification bell so you can be notified when I have new material. So until we meet again, my friends, aloha.